Hey, Matt from The Random Maker here, and today we are gonna be doing a video on how to build, I end quote, Ikea style furniture. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Isn't Ikea cheap, easy to build furniture? Yeah, that's actually the whole point. Now, what we're gonna be building is computer monitor riser because in all honesty, I went to buy one because I was hating the height of my monitors and it was painful how expensive they were for the materials there. Um, I thought about it for a second, realized I had a bunch of MDF laying around. Yeah, so I decided, let's go with that. IKEA's furniture is all about efficient, clean, good looking. Also, the way they design it, it's on purpose because they flat pack it so it's easy to ship, easy to move because MDF stuff, when it's glued together, it's not the strongest stuff in compare, if it's compared to a wooden counterpart. Now let's look at the materials they use. Now, IKEA's furniture is mainly made out of what is called MDF. MDF is sawdust pressed together with a bunch of glue to make a solid structure. And this is what IKEA actually mainly uses and in your hardware store is called melamine. And what melamine is, is MDF core with a layer that looks really nice. Like, look at that. Okay, this one's a little dirty because uh, it's from an old project. Um, and yeah, so it looks really good, okay? If you anchor it into the edges there um, and glue it, it's very structurally sound because there's no wood grain or splitting really because it's just wood chunk and sawdust pressed together to make a board. And yeah, this product, awesome. Little, quite a bit more expensive than the MDF, but uh, we're gonna be using mainly MDF today because we're actually gonna paint ours. Um, because what you do have to do if you use this, you have to put a banding on it so you can actually buy like this white stuff and you just iron it on. It's got a bit of a glue and I didn't want to do that today. Um, I'm just trying to use scrap wood and some stuff laying around my shop so I didn't want to buy anything. So uh, we're actually going to just paint it black to match my desk and uh, let's actually get moving on with this project. Okay, so here's our rough little design. Now, I know you're probably like, Matt, that is an awful drawing. Yep, I can't draw to save my life with my hand. That's why I usually default to AutoCAD, stuff like that. But for simple projects like this, and this is mainly illustrative purposes. Uh, forgot the corner is 11 there. Um, it's mainly for illustrative purposes, so what we're gonna be building. And so yeah, we're gonna have a nice little radius here. I'll show you a really cool trick how to draw those. This style building is, because this is all the way it's gonna be down, I'm not gonna attach on the side. I'm gonna put the screws right through the top and yeah, it's really super, uh, such a simple build that I love it. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna cut some six inch pieces at these two minus three quarters of an inch because that's how thick the MDF is. Um, I'm gonna keep, I wanna keep the back as a full piece um, because that'll help it tie in and yeah. So this is what we're gonna build. Super simple, super easy, let's get moving. Of course it always goes like this. I must, this was not a, I thought this was a 48 by 48 sheet. And so we're actually gonna make it a little shorter and just to make it the desk width, um, we're gonna put, we're actually gonna double up the ends and make it look one piece. Uh, not the greatest solution to the problem, but, and I know some of you are gonna say waste of wood, but uh, in my case, this is all free. If I actually went and bought a whole piece, it wouldn't be free anymore, so. I don't know which way to go. I just thought I'd point that out. Okay, so we've got our piece of over wide wood. And so we're trying to make it look like this. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna run a dead straight line. So we've got our 11 inch piece. And I'm gonna run this eight and a half line right through it all the way. Then how about I just lay this out and show you as I actually go. Uh, 
us right now, if we go like this, we've got this point right here. Now, if my drawing was a little better, we'd put that there. Okay, you're probably wondering, how are we gonna get that perfect circle? Uh, so, I tend to use like old lids and stuff like this, um, and it's pretty easy. So what I've done, we've got our two measurements here, and all I'm gonna do is just press this in. Now, that's it. Cut a bunch of lines here so I don't put too much tension on my blades, and then I'm gonna have to jigsaw it, and then I, We'll figure out how I like it later, but this just this method gives me just a really good starting point. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take to my table saw and I'm going to only cut to here. we have all of our pieces cut out. Um, so we have our two sets of ends to make up for the shortage on the ends. One and a half inch thick like border. Actually, I think will look really good in my brain. So I'm quite happy with the results there. Um, and then we have our backing plate and we have our piece here that, yeah. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get a squaring cloth and you'll understand why I'm going to use it uh, to get everything in line and it just it works really well okay so this is what happens when you have somebody who doesn't know what they're doing running a camera I got in the way of the footage of me putting together the computerizer or, and it was just bad footage so I'm just gonna do a quick little here we go so we can go through this okay so I kept talking about a squaring cloth this is squaring cloth this is a proper name, but basically it is a clamp and it's got your four corners and you just tighten it a little bit here. And if the pieces of wood are the exact same and square, they will be square. Now, I wouldn't trust that because nobody can cut perfect, okay? So you always want to double check with a square and you can always shift things around a little and also make sure that when you're nailing it together you have this you can also use um clamps and other things but i find this the easiest method for me because i can move things around with a sweet square or a square um all i would all i did was i took some glue took one piece out at a time to a degree so i loosened it i did one corner first because you're gonna get a little bit of flex glue down that corner air nailer don't forget your safety glasses and a couple nails on each and you don't have to go crazy with the nails um, but as you're nailing, start using the square more and more to keep it square to what you want. And that's how this got put together. So let's move on. Okay, at this stage, as we can kind of see, uh, let me put this battery in here because that just looks horrible. What we're gonna do is we have glued absolutely everything around here. And I just use, like I said before, uh, pin nails. We have a structure. I don't trust this yet. So what I am going to do is I'm going to pilot drill some holes. Yeah, because the screws are just extra support, I'll probably drop a little bit of glue in the holes. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, we got a bunch of holes. Screw time, let's go. So we're just going to put these in. And as soon as this is done, we're actually going to start the fill process. And all this does really is gives a little bit of backing. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, peace of mind for me mainly. Uh, the whole reason I countersink is just to hide the heads, honestly. With the MDF, it'd be fine. The stuff's pretty good about not splitting. But I just, I, I want it to be pretty. So yeah, take it as what he is. Um, but next stage is wood filler. So what we're gonna do now 
wood filler, any crack crevice, because um, like, I want this to look like one piece of furniture, which I know is not exactly the IKEA model, but I was using more the simplicity of the build as an idea. So um, I'm just gonna take this wood filler, fill everything, set, wait for it to dry, because we're actually going over some parts with the glue. Probably gonna leave this overnight because I want the wood putty to dry really hard, so I'm gonna get a nice sand. Um, yeah, so uh, you'll see me tomorrow. Okay, so apparently the camera didn't turn on when I was doing a lot more of the putty work. So what I'm gonna just quickly show you here, as we can see, I'm already kind of done my first little layer and the quicksand and then I checked the footage and yeah. Uh, so what I'm just gonna show you guys is very simply what you're gonna do over every corner, nail hole or anything of that sort, which is take a putty knife, take a bit of your putty, and try and get it as flat as possible. What you want to do is you want to kind of bend it a little because you don't want to dig too far in because you're just going to ride and you can see we get a little bit in there, but it gets a little patchy. So what you want to do is kind of bend it and just let it flow over your joint. And then I always just kind of touch it a little bit. Now, make sure your gap's filled. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect smooth. There we go. We're good there. Um, because depending on the gap, you're going to need different variations of how much of the wood filler to put in. But um, we're actually going to be using a spray prime product. So I'm actually not too concerned that it looks perfect. I'm mainly just filling in the huge cracks and then the sandable paint primer will fill in like the pores of the wood fill. Okay, well, it's that simple. So uh, let's move on to the next step. Okay, now that you've let it dry, uh, your next step is very simple, sanding. Make sure we're in mass, well ventilated area, um, you know, sawdust or well, I don't know what you'd call it, wood filler dust, so yeah. <laughs> As we can see. Okay, we can see here that looks really good for my purposes. Um, if you can see little pinholes and stuff, uh, I don't really care. Um, this is just a filler for this. And as you can see, this, when I was sanding, I was pulling it over to the side because you never want to concentrate on one area. You want to always feather it out. Um, yeah. So at this point, uh, I'm actually going to spray prime this whole thing. Okay, we can kind of see here now that the primer, nice and dry. I'm just gonna sand it next. And if there's any spots, this is a good point if you wanna fill any with wood filler, like the sandable primer fills in a lot, but it's mainly gaps. So any gouges, and sometimes what I found with MDF, like um, you'll miss stuff just cause it looks the same. So I like to use white primer maybe a little earlier than some people so that I can see any discrepancies. Okay, I'm gonna get back sanding this. Boom. Matt here. Um, I also forgot to mention in this clip that we are gonna switch over as soon as it's primed and sanded and pretty to the final black coat of paint, which you're going to see now. And there's the finished product. Now, you can build a lot of different furniture, this type of style. Just keep in mind how much weight you're gonna put on them and the bracing you'll need. This was not a in-depth tutorial. As we can see, the ends are a little thicker, which is not typically how Ikea would look, but you know what? Fits my desk and it looks nice, so I'm gonna move on. There it is. That looks pretty good, eh? Well, if you like this video, why don't you hit the like button? If you wanna see more of this type of content, and it would really help us out if you hit the subscribe button um, so you can see all future content and see what the random maker has coming down the pipes because you never know what's going to come up with the random maker. And if you have any ideas or just want to say something about this video, why don't you leave it in the comments below? Well, I guess that's all I got to say. This is from Matt from the random maker saying until next time, let's get making.